yes, Lord. And we give God glory. We give God praise for what he is saying and what he is doing in the earth today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. I will pour, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Glory to God. I want to read that so you can hear it. Your young men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maid servants and my men servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. <laughs> Good morning, Jacqueline Boris. Back to you, Vita Dickens. God bless you. Anita Laurie Johnson. Good morning, Juanita Campbell. Good morning, Alfred Banyard. Thank you, sir. You hang with me all day, every day. Juanita Towns, Dr. Aqua, Barbara Sammy, my Insta, my Instagram family. I love to praise Sylvia247. Let's go, Instagram. Let's go, my YouTube family. Those of you that are watching the replay, I love you. Thank you. Make sure hit that subscribe button so that you'll know when we upload these new lessons in the Holy Ghost. We are doing some amazing things and discovering, praise God, what it really means to be delivered, what it really means to be fully saved, to be fully free from all demonic spirits, from all oppression, glory to God. That is what God has promised us and nothing less will do. We will not live bound. We will not live oppressed. We will not live looking over our shoulders at past trauma, past events, and living life like it's not golden. We are of the generation of the outpouring of Holy Spirit. We are of the generation, the last day outpouring, the next Pentecost is imminent right now in Korea. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands who have gathered to discuss Pentecost, to discuss the next move of God, to discuss what it is that God is doing by his spirit to discuss how we all can get involved and how God is moving in the earth. He's not just moving in Detroit. He's not just moving in Maryland. He's not just moving in America. He's actually moving all over the world by his spirit. How, how is he doing it? By his spirit. He is moving all over the world by his spirit. By his spirit, he is raising up a people, a generation. Bishop Thornton said, a new army, <laughs> a new army. God is raising up a new army. Hallelujah. A fresh people, a people that have moved into this upper room experience. Good morning, Andrea. I'm so glad to see you and Henry enjoying and relaxing. That blesses a mother. Thank you. Margaret Johnson, good morning. Hey, Patty Jones, Pentecost, Bianca Rivers coming in. Wendy, God bless you, girl. I got you in my field. I'm coming. Joyce Richardson Williams, Evangelist, come on. Uh, Dekeba L. Rogers, listen, God is doing some great things. I need you to like, tag, and share. Good morning, Dr. Carolyn Hall. Hey, God bless you. Annie, the kingdom, I love it. Hey, God bless you. I love that ministry. Praise God. Come on in, like, tag, and share. Listen, we got 24 hours to the Faith and Public Education Forum. I don't want to skip over that, Stacy. Thea, I don't want to skip. Gloria Jean, I don't want to skip over that. You say, well, I don't have any school age children. No, but the children in your family. Listen, we can provide a quality education to our children. Now we're going to need the community to help us. 
We need parents, grandparents, mommies and daddies. We need everyone to help educate this generation. Mommies and daddies are 18, 19, 17, 20 maybe, and they're having children and we have to raise them. We have to parent, we have to educate, we have to introduce them to Christ. We have to introduce them to Jesus. We have to introduce them to the Holy Spirit. And so we can't turn our head. Monica Monet, God bless you. She'll be with me. I want to just say this. If you are in the Detroit area, this is a free forum. The mayor of the city will be present. City council president will be present. And the superintendent of DPSCD will be present. Many faith leaders, staff members, there will be teams of people there to answer the most critical questions that face our children in school. Chronic absenteeism, literacy, reading and math. And we must address their mental health. Those three subjects are going to be the topics of the forum of the day. We are coming from the perspective, are children sacred to us today? And then what is sacred? So we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be pushing, we're going to be getting answers and we're going to expose those who attend to resources from nonprofits and from our sponsors, HAP, Heritage Optical, and of course, the pastoral teams and leaders of our city. I am urging you, if you are in the Detroit metropolitan area, that's Oak, that's um, Royal Oak, that's Southfield, that's Gross Point, that's Oak Park. If you are in the parameters of Detroit, I am asking and urging you, and as an educator, as a caregiver, as a parent, as a youth pastor, a youth leader, if you are in ministry, if you are a godmama, an auntie, and uncle, and you have to drop the children off to help the family you want to be at this forum. We've got 24 hours, amen. And I want you to go to Eventbrite and register. Just look it up. You can find my name, Carletta Vaughn, Faith and Public Education. Google it. And I, I want you in those seats. I don't believe that we are doing all we can do to educate our beautiful Black, Brown, Hispanic, Jewish, Buddhist, Sikh, Pakistani, uh, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Chaldean uh, children. We got children that we got to raise up and get to Pentecost. Listen to this. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Ooh, glory to God. Sherry Henderson, thank you. Highland Park, Ferndale, absolutely. Thank you. Amen. Ham Tramit, all of you that are in this general vicinity, you want to be in the seats. The doors open at 8 a.m. Breakfast is served, a good, hot, full breakfast. You can come and eat and then enjoy us for about five or so hours service, not service, but the forum starts at 8.45 a.m., 9 a.m. Our special speaker, Reverend Robert Luttrell, is going to share with us, are our children sacred? And then we will have introduction and greetings from the mayor of the city of Detroit, from the council president of Detroit, and then from the greatest superintendent ever, I believe, Dr. Nikolai Viti will be with us. And then we will go into panel discussions. There'll be three major panels, but we will discuss the topics 
And what are the best practices? What do we need to do in collaboration to educate this generation? I love it. I'm in the mountain, folks. <laughs> I'm up in this mountain. So I want to see a revolution in our children. Now, today is also giving day. Every five days, we put a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. We put a seed of $5. $5. If you are on Instagram, I've got some people out there. You can cash app, dollar sign. Corletta Vaughn, or you may go to our website at www.gotellit.org. Thank you for your seat. $5. Every five days we sow. On the fifth day, we sow a seed of $5. Or you can uh, go to Zelle. If you are a Zelle person, bank to bank, that's a safe space then you can just simply put in my name, Corletta Vaughn, C-O-R-L-E-T-T-A Vaughn, V as in victory, A-U-G-H-N at gmail.com. Glory to God. Go to that website, go tell it. I go tell it on the mountain, but it's just go tell it. Go tell it, and the it is the message of Pentecost. Go tell it all over the world, go tell it that O-R-G. Put your seed in the ground and let me know that you have done that in Jesus' name. Now listen, you know what? I push a lot of books and the Holy Spirit said to me, Vandela, what about your book? Living with the Advantage. My Instagram family, get this book. TJ, thank you. Cover that for me. Glory to God. If you are on uh, Zoom, if you are in a, a YouTube congregation or you are live with me, this is the book that I've written. It's a primer on the Holy Spirit, Living with the Advantage. Living with the Advantage. Glory to God. Get that seed sown. Monica says, I'm a proud DP. Absolutely. Thank you for my teacher, Mrs. Grunfeld. Thank God for teachers that rescue children, hallelujah, and became surrogate parents. That was God setting you up. Please get this book, Living with the Advantage. It is about 130 page of lusciousness. <laughs> lusciousness. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. It has wonderful information. It is a primer on the Holy Spirit. It's not meant to be over your head. This is not an academic book. It's a primer on the Holy Spirit. And if you have the book, read it. And if you read it, read it again, because I believe that there's so much, even when I read, I'm like, wow, I wrote that. <laughs> Get this book. This is a powerful book, Living with the Advantage. Go to our website, www.gotellit.org. Or you can get it from Amazon, or you can Kindle it and download it to your device. Hallelujah. This is good ground. As you are giving, this is good ground. I want to go back to our, our lesson in Luke. Those of you on free conference call, get your seed in the ground. Thank you for your seeds. Vanessa, Crystal, thank you. Benina, thank you. Janet, thank you. Vandela Paula, thank you. Sharon, Dr. Sharon Smith, thank you. Come on, share the book. Thank you, Ava. It's a powerful book. Thank you, Paula. I appreciate you, Paula Mata. Gloria Jean, thank you. C, gladly sown, happy to sow. Chris, Chris, thank you. Rita Bill, Dr. Rita Bill, Juanita Campbell. Hallelujah. I know, I promise you it's coming out this week. <laughs> Text me, John. You know I'm like that. Uh, Pixley, how are you feeling in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Zoomers. Thank you, Dr. Brenda, for sowing your seed. Tracy says, this book will change your life. Absolutely living with the advantage. Glory to God. Get the book. Thank you. Instagram, thank you. It's an easy read. Beautiful. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you for your seed. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Glory to God. Dr. Karen Daughtry, thank you. 
Thank you so much. Glory to God. Get your seed of five dollars in the ground. Thank you, Miosha. You've been with me for almost 40 years, baby. Hallelujah. I am Leah Shabazz. Thank you. Pastor Sheila Donald Johnson. Praise God. Hallelujah. Karen Jenkins Watt. She's a worshiper. My God. Oh God. A fresh anointing, Sheila. A fresh outpouring upon you. I just heard it in the spirit like never before, like nothing you've ever experienced. I hear the Lord say, don't be exasperated. I hear the Lord say, I heard you when you prayed. Hallelujah for your grandchildren. I, I hear you. And I know she. And for your righteousness. I will pour out my spirit upon you. Mm, that just dropped in my spirit, that Pastor Sheila. Glory to God. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Tanya Shelton, she said, I'm reading it again. Hallelujah. If you'd like to sow by mail, you can do so in the name of Jesus, 1745 East Grand Boulevard. Go to that website, www.gotellit, and you will get wonderful information about what we're doing and tomorrow glory to god faith and public education you know only the holy ghost can tell you to do stuff like this <laughs> Woo, he found rentals i've gotten some emails pastor Jeff Folsom. thank you son for following and supporting and loving me helen edwards ruth williams evangelist janice thornton charmaine coleman thank you for your seed i miss how to get the book Glenda, you can go to Amazon. You can go to Amazon and get this book. Go right to Amazon, put in Living with the Advantage, or you can go to our website. We'll sign it and send it off to you. Glory to God. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do that for Pastor Jenkins uh, today. It's because it is his birthday, and I want to give that. Hallelujah. Uh, my, uh, Thea says, my children even absolutely have the book. Glory to God. Those of you that are coming in asking about the forum tomorrow, it is tomorrow at Huntington Place. Glory to God. Listen, it's a great Christmas gift. It's a great Christmas gift. Buy 10 of them. Amen. If you buy 10, I'll give you a discount on it. Praise the Lord. And give them out as Christmas gifts. How about that? Give them out at Thanksgiving. Everybody needs to know about the power that raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> oh my God, I saw you all putting it out there yesterday. It was amazing. And I got a lot of hits about it too. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want us to go there. Luke chapter four, verse 18. For he has anointed me, glory to God. Let's go back right into that. The anointing. Thank you, Bridget Horton. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Uh, Thea was on TV. Great interview. All right. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Dr. Patricia James, thank you. Living with advantage. How to successfully navigate life with the Holy Spirit as your competitive age and best friend. The advantage. Wow. Pastor Folsom said I made my entire steward board read this book. Wow. Listen, I just felt Holy Spirit drop on me in a way. I want to say this. The Spirit of the Lord, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, has been given to us to successfully navigate life. Somebody put that in the chat, Jasmine. Jen, listen to me. Thank you, TJ. Thank you. Listen to me. I mean, who I just heard that. Glennis, thank you. Archie, thank you. Carolyn, thank you. Bertram, thank you. Listen to me. Everybody needs to know this. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, sis. I want you to hear this. 
It just dropped in my spirit. It just fell on me so heavy. Holy Spirit is a gift. Holy Spirit is a gift that is given to us by the Father. That you and I can successfully navigate our lives. Are you hearing me? <laughs> that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has been given to us. Thank you, Zoomers. That you and I, it's a gift. He is a gift. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father is the old covenant. Jesus Christ, the new covenant. Holy Spirit, the now covenant. That you and I can successfully. Good morning, Steve Etheridge. Good morning, son. Good morning. Good morning, Barbara. Can successfully navigate life. Ooh, chaplain, I just heard that. Ooh, somebody write that down. And somebody needs to know this. Oh, Rabbi Ki Otaba, don't you want a gift? Don't you want this gift? Whew. Now, the gift is of no value if you don't open the box and use the gift. Use the gift. Use the gift. How do I successfully navigate my life? How do I teach my family, my parish, my congregants to successfully navigate life? God Almighty, put that in the chat. Elder Nettie, Crystal, love on the ocean. Eva said, I want this gift. Some of you have emailed me. I have a young lady that emailed me. She lives in Virginia. She said, I want my children to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How do I? I said, oh God, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get on the plane and fly down there. I'm going to have to get my team and go down there. Not to scale my Cook got up, old shot past the bell. We got to go down there. These children want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Cheba. Reba, if you are not successfully, joyfully, fluently navigating life, I want to introduce you to the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I want you to know who Holy Spirit is. I want you to have a relationship. Oh, Pastor Bell said, let's go. She ready. Time to say children and the Holy Spirit. Woo, I want, come on. Dr. Felicia, we already there. I got a team. That's my team. Let's go. Hallelujah. No, Shataba. Stacy, my God, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Let's go, Virginia. Let's go. I, I, you know, I may need to start doing home groups. I may need to just start doing cell groups. Hallelujah. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel prophetic today. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the missing conversation in church Sunday school curriculum, in universities, in the academy. Here is a missing conversation. <laughs> Paul says, sound like a plan. Hallelujah. The Father has given us all that we need. 
He has poured out his spirit in this last day that you and I, come on, Monica, may successfully navigate. Come on, Samuel, come on, let's go. Hallelujah. That we might successfully navigate life. That's living with the advantage. Holy Spirit is the gift that has been given to us that you and I may successfully navigate life. Navigate successfully. Come on, Tiffany. Tiffany says, if we had more children filled with Holy Spirit, imagine how crime in the schools and or against them would diminish and disappear. Yes, ma'am. I, I was on a, a, a forum last night and they wanted to, they said, what is the, come on, Pastor Nettie, what is the number one problem in our schools? And you know, I want to say demons. <laughs> But you know, Paul said, when you in Rome, you got to be like the Romans. When you in Greeks, you got to be like the Greeks. But the number one issue in our, in our schools is demons. Demons. D, God bless you, girl. That's the number one issue in our world is demons. Demons in these children. Demonic spirits. They're coming out of trauma and in their homes. Demonic spirits. <laughs> Demons, but I couldn't say it on that forum, but oh Lord, demons. And you cannot get them free if you're not free. Listen to what it said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, I mean, Acts chapter number two, verse 38 and 39. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all, listen to me, Instagram, who are afar away. Sylvia says, I want the gift operating in my life. Our children are tormented. Yes, Jen, tormented by demons. In the prisons, demons. Demonic spirits, demons, Pastor Schiller. Demons. Yeah, nah, 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 she. Demons. What is the number one problem? Demons. Demonic spirits that are harassing, tormenting, and molesting our children. Demons, oh, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I'll be in a different space. Demons, this is why the faith community must embrace schools. You must embrace educators. You must embrace the mountain of education. Faith leaders, we must become involved. These babies have demons. They are battling spirits, unclean spirits. Children with demons. Now, what, what is it that God has given us? He has given us the gift of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God moving in the earth today. And when you eliminate teaching, when you censor Holy Spirit, when you censor the teachings on Holy Spirit, you are opening the portals, the gates, and the doors to demonic oppression. Ooh, it says we cannot use, oh girl, the worldly means to come against spiritual issues. Ooh, Heidi, my God, we cannot. We cannot. This is why I run for office. I hate campaigning. But I'm running for this office, not, not because I don't, I got the time, but if there is not a voice of God in this space, 
I'm not talking about just being a Christian, but someone who understands and recognizes the spirituality of children. The spirituality of children. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. We are working on their education. We want them to get degrees. We want them to get trades. We want them to be educated so they can get a job. But what about the spirituality of your child? We have neglected. That's why they walk around with devices in their hands all day. This is why they are having so 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 much uh, uh, distractions. Their 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 attention span is so short because they are accustomed to twenty second TikTok. They they are accustomed. They they don't know how to sit and listen, uh, listen because they are their their minds are being formatted in thirty seconds, thirty second formats being formatted in 30 second sound bites. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. We have neglected an entire generation that does not know Holy Spirit. You're so busy. You want to make sure that they have their uniforms. You want to make sure uh, that they, oh God, I hear you. God, I hear you. God, I hear you. We're so, so committed many times to getting the child Christian or dedicated, baptized, depending upon your liturgy. And then we just walk away. We just walk away. We just walk away and never even make them study the Bible. Never even make them read the Bible. Never even make them study Sunday school lessons. Never even sit down with them and walk through the scriptures. I was in a Jewish synagogue the other day uh, talking to the rabbis and how they catechize their children and how they they take them through the Torah that every little boy, eight, nine, ten years old is already familiar with the Torah, already familiar with Passover and the cedar, already familiar with God and the prophets of the Torah. And that at 12 years old, they can read the Torah. They know who God is. They know how God, good morning, Tasha, come on in. And first lady Taylor, let's go. They already know God. They already know the Torah. And at 12, they are bar mitzvah or the girls are uh, uh, mitzvah and 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 they know God. They have grown up with it. They celebrate it in their homes. We got coded children that that just running wild. Baptist children running wild. We won't bring them to Sunday school. We we won't we won't get them involved in the youth club of the church, the youth ministry of the club of the church. We won't get them involved. We won't read the Bible at home to them. They sit in front of a, a device all day. They don't talk God. They don't speak Christ. We don't introduce them until they get in trouble to the Holy Spirit. We allow music. We allow, they don't allow that in a Jewish home. They don't allow uh, their children uh, to hear the, the rap music and, and the violence. They don't allow them to watch uh, certain things. The Muslims, they don't allow it. They know the Quran. They know it. Our children don't know the Bible. We don't teach it to them. We don't have family devotions around. We don't even teach them to bless their food. They just go in and eat like hungry dogs. They don't even know a blessing. Listen to me. The number one problem of our children today is demons, demonic oppression, already Already they are struggling with mental health issues, depression. How are you eight years old and depressed? My baby, he depressed. How? What is he watching? What is in that household? What is coming through his ear gates? What is coming into his eye gates? What is going on? Because we are not dealing with the spirituality of our children. 
Katora na mashaya. Ko kama mamasha. Wearing $500 gym shoes. My God, listen to this. The indoctrination and introduction to things. Oh, God, that establish their, their, their value systems. Come on, Dr. Denise, that establish their value system in money and success and not in God and prayer and not in praying in the spirit. Our children, we have neglected their spirituality. Y'all getting to hear my message for tomorrow. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. I want to read this again. Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to, I want to, I want to just read this off to you. And I want you to identify so we have lying spirits. I want you to identify this. I want you to see how it's operating in our churches and in our children. A perverse spirit. One of the questions yesterday is, what about the LGBTQ community? Oh my God. At six and seven and, and eight years old, we've got to deal with this. We've got to, we've got to pray. We've got to move in this arena, the spirit of haughtiness, where they're arrogant and prideful and feel as if they are entitled. The spirit of heaviness, where they go through such hopelessness and dejection. Where at three and four and five years old, they're non-communicative. They have shut down their community. They're delayed in talking, delayed in hearing, delayed in cognition. Spirit of whoredoms, oh my God. The stuff, the love of money and, 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 and uh, what we're feeding them, their food and, 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 and food addictions. They're overweight and underprayed for, oh my God. I don't want to go there. The spirit of infirmity, children who have asthma and hay fever and allergies, who have lingering disorders, little children getting cancer, little children dying early from diseases. Oh God, a man came to Jesus and said, my son is grievously vexed. And Jesus said, how long has he been like this? And the man said, since childhood, he's suicidal. My children are suicidal, the gnashing of teeth. The, 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 the mental illness, they're crying at night, scratching themselves, biting themselves, self-mutilation, the spirit of bondage, addictions and fear, can't sleep without the light on, scared to go uh, into the dark, my God, movies because of what we allow them to see, what we allow them to put uh, before them, the spirit of fear where they already have anxiety and stress, where they're already distrusting and operating in rejection. Oh God, seducing spirits, but they are attracted to this music, this sound that is seducing them, uh, that is deceiving them. And they're already telling you, I don't wanna go to church. I don't wanna go to church. I don't wanna go to church. And we as parents, younger parents, well, if they don't want to go to church, I ain't going to make them. What? What? This is what our children are facing. This is what we have allowed to slip in to our homes. This is what we have allowed to slip in. Glory to Armando Shaba. We've allowed this to slip in to our homes and to our schools. We are teaching our children that it's all right to be wayward, to operate opposite of God. I went into a, a, a Armenian church the other day for a meeting with leaders, faith leaders. And I, I noticed that, now listen, listen, listen. I know that there are systemic issues, but I just want to talk about something. And I, I noticed, I saw these men, beautiful men, and beautiful white men, and they were so well-dressed. 
house kind of casual because I've been out campaigning. It wasn't real, real casual. But I just look, I say, who are these men? They're so well dressed. And they were the Church of the Lord Jesus Latter day Saints. They were Mormons. And I was sitting next to them. And I was like, wow. So we're talking, he's, you know, we're talking about cooking and eating. And we were there for luncheon. And, you know, I'm on in all of these spaces. Every vote, every vote counts. And, and when I found, found out that he was the, one of the speakers for the day, I said, is this you? He said, yes. I said, what? <laughs> wow. Wow. Listen to me. They were so well-groomed and so you, you could see the God on them. You can see the God on them. Our, our children are all over everything. Our children are, wow, they don't want to wear suits. They don't want to wear clothes. Listen to this. Dr. Aqua says, I have little ones in kindergarten and younger on ADHD medication. Oh, Oh, God, Dr. J, who is in the mental health area, says counseling the children is a difficult challenge. God keeps opening these doors, had an opportunity to speak to the, to the priest who is responsible. The Archdiocese of Detroit. And I said, listen, do y'all vote? He said, yes. I said, you've got to vote for me. Because our children need someone spiritual at that table. Listen, listen, you've got to hear me. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. I want you to see this and we're going to, we're going to move on, but I, I, I need you to see this. Oh, I want to give you keys. Mm. <laughs> oh God, come on, come on. Janice said, my daughter is 14. Going to church every time, absolutely, the door open, absolutely. And she's an A-B honor student, absolutely. Can we just pray now? I feel the spirit of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, wake us up that we might see oppression on our children. That we can see where disappointment and regret and stress and trauma is attacking and tormenting our children. Not just those we birth, but those that we nurture, those that we teach, those that we are around in our churches, on our jobs. Help us now, Holy Spirit. Give us the spirit of discernment in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel this very strongly this morning. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And this promise is for your children. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Now, I want you to go here with me to Matthew 17. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 14, that when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And so Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Now watch this. Verse 17, verse 16 says, because the disciples could not cure the child. Hmm. I want you to go with me on this because I, I need to show you this. Brittany says, Lord, have mercy on my son. Yes, I'm standing with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wake up, wake up. When my grandchildren are sleeping in my house, I know that's right, mama. She said, I anoint each one of them and pray over them. And now, mama, you got to introduce them to the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Reba Mama Sia, Dr. Audrey, mental health professional. We've got to introduce Holy Spirit. 
to our children. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Watch this. And Jesus said, bring him here to me, verse 17. And Jesus, watch this, rebuke the demon. And it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. I want to just deal with that right there. Oh, my nephew, grandmother, for the sake of a check, had him put on heavy medication. Oh, my God. When he was four, when he turned 10, he smoking marijuana. When he stopped taking it, he rose up and busted his mama in the mouth. Listen to me. Folks, I'm teaching something that folks don't want to hear. I need you to, I need to, Ava, come on, I need you to hear me today. Mm. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Oh, we have neglected the spirituality of our children. Dr. Spencer, you go on YouTube. There are people, there. there's wonderful lessons out there. There's a woman out there that teaches on the Holy Spirit for children. I don't know her name, Pastor Val, put it in the chat. And Pastor Val, she'll be out there soon. I'm going to help her get her material out there. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Stand with me in agreement right now. And we're about to turn this thing around. If we don't, an entire generation will be taken out by demons. I want to sound the alarm. We are in a state of emergency. I want to sound the alarm. Listen to this very carefully. Hear me good. Lean in. Apostle Joy, we have neglected the spirituality of our children. But we have embraced the judicial system. Come on here. And medication on our children. And we call it mental health. It's demons. It's demons. It's the spirit of heaviness. It, these are oppressive spirits. Dr. Cynthia Brown and Bishop, God bless you. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> I know that's right, Alfred. Children are having children, 18, 19 years old, and they are on drugs. They're born addicted. They're born into a trauma environment, a demonically oppressed environment. We are watching it in our schools every day. I want you to hear me good. We have neglected in our church praxis the spirituality of our children. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Hear me good. You are more focused on them getting a good grade than you are on them going to heaven. You are more focused on them getting a scholarship in sports than you are in them being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking big and I'm talking loud and I won't take a word of it back. You are more in tune with them becoming financially solvent and fluent in money than you are with them going to church, knowing their Bibles, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. Oh, come on, Brittany Grayson, I love you. <laughs> Grayson is on every morning. Alan is on every morning. Listen to me very carefully. This is serious. This is serious. And then we're shocked. Younger parents thought they had a better idea than old school parents. Uh, I'm not going to do what my mama did to me. I'm going to let my child enjoy music. I didn't allow it in my house. I'm going to let my child do it. I'm going to let my child uh, see that. You don't need to, they don't need to be watching that. That's too much. I'm going to let my child, mama, you was too tough. Yeah, daddy, you was too tough. You know, that's what they say to old school parents. And then they get children. And they allow, they move the boundaries. 
They allow things to come in because they're trying to give them, quote unquote, freedom when they're actually giving them bondage. I want you to hear me very carefully. This word of the Lord shall not fall to the ground. I will not be silent. I will not be silent about this. We have neglected the spirituality, Jen, of our children. We act as if they don't have a spirit. Five years old. Look here. I don't even know who Cardi B is. <laughs> I, I see the name, but I don't know what that is. Five years old, influenced by Cardi B and can't repeat the 23rd Psalm. Five years old, I knew the Lord's Prayer. Five years old, I knew the 23rd Psalms. Uh, five years old, I knew John 3, 16 and 17. Five years old, my, my parents didn't play that. My parents didn't play that. These five-year-old children do not even know that there be a Holy Ghost. I want you to hear me carefully. The spirit of disappointment, the spirit of rage, the spirit of insanity is on our children. It cannot be medicated. It cannot be counseled. It has to be cast out. Listen to me. We never thought about going to school and being murdered. We never thought about it. We never thought about police in our schools. We never thought about it. We never thought about it. We never thought about it. Miyoshi says, Pastor Miyoshi says, listen, I want to put this up. Said, my granddaughter Vanessa is in Ohio 10, was having anxiety issues and was given meds. Look at, look at this. Look at the medical community. Look at the business. Look at the business. Look at the dollars. Look at the money. Follow the money trail. When she got to our house, I talked to her and told her about God and the Holy Spirit. We'll give her peace. No more pills. She hasn't had any issue and loves God. Come on. And our older children are neglecting the spirituality of our grandchildren. Thank God for grandmas and grandpas. I want you to hear this very carefully. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Look at this. My daughter told me as I was talking to my granddaughter about drinking in college that I should not be alarmed because she had already taught her how to drink and be responsible. My God. My God. But did we teach them how to pray? Did we teach them about the devil? Did we teach them? My God. Already teaching her how to drink and be responsible. And we think that's good teaching. <laughs> They know every rapping song. They know every song. They know every cuss word and will cuss you out as in the schools, but have no Holy Spirit. Folks, we got to do a better job. Got to do a better job. I want to read this. And Jesus rebuked the demon. I'm in 17 and 8. And it came out of him. Look at this. And the child. I don't want you to get this confused. The child was cured from that very hour. The child was cured. I want you to hear this again. So what, are the, what, what was the manifestation? The manifestation is that the child was having seizures. The manifestation is that the child was having seizures. And that the child was being thrown into the fire and then thrown into the water. That the child, this is a child, was already oppressed by the devil with the spirit of infirmity. One text says, you deaf and dumb spirit come out. Now, you would have never thought <laughs> that it was a deaf and dumb spirit 
But Jesus rebuked the demon and called the demon out by name. Ooh, glory to God. I, I got to give you all these strategies. I know my time is up, but I, I got to give you these strategies. Listen to this. Mark chapter number nine. The father cried out and said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mark 9, 24. And when Jesus saw that the people came running, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you come out and enter him no more. Watch this. And then the spirit cried out and convulsed him greatly. This is a child. And it came out. And then he became as one dead. So that many said the child is dead. But Jesus took him and lifted him up and he arose. I need you to see this. I need you to see it. Jesus says in Luke chapter number four, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me, listen, to preach the gospel to the poor, but he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Our children are brokenhearted. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, Benina says, I go in and anoint them. Say, the older ones know, don't close the door. And I still go in and anoint them. And whenever I go to their house, if I don't remember, they look at me and like, why are you not anointing me? Thank God. Thank God. Don't stop it. Oh, Jesus. Many of our children are already broken hearted. Fathers are dead. Fathers are incarcerated. No dad in the home. No grandfather. No uncle. Many of them are already broken hearted. Many of them are already broken in their spirit. They have been molested. Human trafficking. They're being bullied. They're being violated. They're already broken hearted. They're already oppressed. Watch this. And the Holy Spirit has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives. I love this. And to set at liberty those that are oppressed. What is going on with our children? Demons. The spirit of the age, the culture. And we as the people of God have neglected to give them the gift of the Holy Spirit for the Spirit of the Lord. Oh God, the Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, has been given to us to navigate life successfully. You're going to need to give them Jesus, absolutely, but you've got to get them filled with the Holy Spirit, learning the scriptures, knowing the Bible, going to church. You've got to no longer no, neglect the spirituality of your child, of your children, those that are in your care. Because demons, demonic oppression, ADHD is nothing but a demonic spirit. All of this medication that they're putting in your child's system is nothing but introducing them to demonic spirits and addiction to drugs. Behavior can, cannot be medicated. It's got to be mandated. Oh, God. Listen to me very carefully. I want to pray for you now in the name of Jesus. This is why you have to be free. This is why we have to be free. This is why you and I cannot be under disappointment and regret. We have got to be free. We have got to be delivered. Because we have a whole generation behind us. Some for, for us is the second or third generation behind us that are full of demons. Parents are full of demons. The household, there is no God there. There is no Christ. There is no deliverance. They're reading all kinds of material and seeing pornography, watching people rape 
and violate each other sexually. They are being exposed to too much way too early. We have neglected the spirituality of our children. And we need men to rise up. Thank you, chaplain, and stand in the gap. But listen to me carefully. The gift of Holy Spirit is the solution. Solution. And because we have downplayed Holy Spirit, we have downplayed deliverance, we've downplayed the gifts. We love Jesus, praise God. That's the new covenant. But what about the now covenant of Holy Spirit? I want to challenge you to go through your houses and households. And I want you to see with new eyes. I want you to look in different spaces. And I want you to see how the devil, the devil is entering. Where are the portals? Your child said, I'm just, I'm just uh -uh. you don't say that. You're disappointed about what? Talk to me. I want you to hear this spirit of disappointment is not age appropriate. Spirit of disappointment is not age appropriate. Listen to, listen to me carefully. Get your child introduced to Holy Spirit. Talk about it every day. The same way you, you give them food, give them a scripture. We have got to turn this thing around, folks. We have got to get our children to Pentecost. And I want to wake some of us up. I want to wake some of us up. We're sleeping. We're sleeping on the children. We're sleeping. I want to wake you up in the name of you. Go through your house. Listen, look at those phones. Lady got up in the school board meeting the other day and said, how do you expect us to teach? And these children are on their phones. We need a policy that bans cell phone usage in the classroom except for emergencies what are they doing facebook TikTok, social media reels our children are not stupid our children are not dumb our children are oppressed god we give you glory <laughs> oh god Come on, Grayson, lead, lead in, baby, lean in, because you will be one of the leaders that will help save your generation, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Dr. Patricia James, listen to me carefully. We can no longer neglect the apostolic, the prophetic, thank you, Pastor Val, the evangelistic pastoral gifts on our children. We must nurture and cultivate Worship leaders out of them, intercessors, not rap artists. We have got to pay attention. This gift is for them as well. I want us to get ready for communion. How did the bosh get in? Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Oh God, we give you praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. That now, God, we have heard the word of the Lord. And now, Lord, we are ready to seal the word that we have received this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take the bread and we break it. And we say, like you said, this is your body that has been broken for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift this bread up before you as we take it today to seal in this word, and not just for us, but for our children. In Jesus' mighty name, let's eat it together. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> and in the old shot, we lift the cup and we say, this is the blood that has been shed for us, that we might enter into the new and the now covenant of God. Now seal this word in our heart and forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our neglect. 
Forgive us of our carelessness. Forgive us of our, our ignorance. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Now, let's drink it together. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. As we move into this revival that's hitting the earth, we must grab these young parents. We must grab these young parents and we must come to the place where we get the young parents and say, listen, God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And all you need is to know his son, Jesus, and engage his Holy Spirit. And your life will change forever. We got to grab them. And if you are a parent and you didn't do a good job with your child's spirituality, call them this weekend. Invite them to the house of God. Call them now in the name of Jesus and say, listen, I want to have a conversation with you. There's a few things that I didn't tell you that I need to tell you. Have the conversations. If they are behind prison bars, they're incarcerated. If they are in trouble right now, speak their name out now in the name of Jesus. Speak their name out now. There is no person that is beyond the reach of Holy Spirit. If they've made their bed in hell, if they're in the drug house right now, they're in the prison house right now. I don't care how old your child is, mom, dad. It's not too late to introduce them to the gift of Holy Spirit. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. I kind of, uh, dad, forgive yourself. Don't let oppression bind you up that you don't have a good relationship with your children. Don't worry about the years you missed. Don't worry about the things that you didn't do. I want you today to own being a father. Own it. And I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you now in Jesus' name. Ooh, listen, if you didn't get a chance to give, if you didn't get a chance to sow your seed, I know I'm, I, I just need you to get this and grab this now in the name of the Lord. Cash app, dollar sign, Carletta Vaughn. Put your seed in the ground. Put your seed, put a seed in the ground for your child. Put a seed in the ground for your grandchild. Put another seed in the ground. Let's get these babies to Pentecost. Put a seed in the ground for a niece, for a nephew. Put a seed in the ground. It's a $5 seed. Put a seed in the ground for children who you know that are ravaged by the spirit of oppression. Ravaged by anxiety, put a seed in the ground. Put a seed in the ground for the mom that is carrying a child now, and you know them. Put a seed in the ground for that unborn baby. Put your seeds in the ground today. And let's save a generation. I got to go. I know I'm over, but I, I God, God has given us something. Hallelujah, hallelujah, it's not too late. Put a seed in the ground. Put the seed, a $5 seed. Glory to God. Thank you, Brittany. Hallelujah. Wow, some of you are sowing. Hallelujah. Put a seed in the ground for your child. Put a seed in the ground for your children, your adult children, your teenage children. Put a seed in the ground for your toddlers. Put a seed in the ground and let us reverse the curse that this devil has put on our children. Hallelujah. <laughs> we will no longer neglect the spirituality of our children. We have been given power, power over all of the works of the devil. I gotta go. I love y'all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Zell is Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll leave it up. PayPal. You can go to our website, www.gotellit.org. You can do Zell, Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. Or you can go, hallelujah, to the post office and mail it to 1745 East Grand Boulevard. It's not too late. Get your seed in the ground for your children 
Put a seed in there for each child. Put a seed in there. This is the hour. And let us reverse the curse on our children. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. <laughs> Thank y'all. I love y'all. I got to go. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah.